Y'all meet Killer. Killer is the new shop attack cat. I'm gonna train him how to him or her, whatever it is. I'm gonna train him how to eat people. Uh, protect me. <laughs> uh, it's the littlest one that runs around out here and it's already weaned and the big ones won't let him eat nothing when this, they get fed. And I feel sorry for him. He looks big and fat, but he's mostly hair. So I've been feeding him a little bit every day. He's been working on that can for about four days now. And then he'll go lay down and go to sleep. Maybe he'll hang around in the shop here. Give us something to laugh at. You think, what about that killer? That all right with you? Huh? That okay with you? You don't care you're eating. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, today is Sunday. And I didn't get a whole lot done today. It was uh, rainy, drizzly, overcast. Not as hot as it has been. We lost our cool weather. That front that we had come through last week. And it got hot again. It wasn't so bad today. But I was very tired. I just didn't get much done. I did a lot of resting. Sitting around the house. Uh, talking with Mama. and Just things like that. Now I've had a couple of requests. The last one from my buddy George. I uh, wanted to see a little shop tour. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I don't think I've done one in a long time if I ever have. But um, let's we'll start over here. Uh, this is the, the wall, the back wall, south wall. And let's see, over here is where I keep. There's my milling machine. And this toolbox, so I'll keep all my milling machine uh, related tools. Uh, that, you know, parallels. That's my um, stand for my dial indicator. Now, most of this stuff is Harbor Freight tools, but they work for no more than I use them. All that kind of stuff. I like to keep everything in tooling for the whatever machine where it's supposed to be. And then we move down a little bit and drill press uh, assorted bits here and there. That's, the wood bits are there. I've got a set of Forstner bits that are um, all but worthless, but uh, they work in a pinch. <laughs> uh, my sewing machine's up there, which I rarely use, but if I ever need it, I got it. Uh, more stuff, transfer punches, Allen wrenches, a sharpening system, which I got a comment from a guy that I did not realize the machine runs this way. And he says I should reverse the motor because it actually needs to run this way, sharpening bits. Now, I, didn't, I never knew that. So uh, one day when I get time, I'll take this out. I think you just switched two wires, but I'll research that some more. And I will do that. Thank you very much for that comment. And a lot of guys will get um, a little snippy at you if you make a comment saying you did this wrong or you should do this right. Not me. If y'all see me do something wrong, tell me. Or if I can do something better, tell me. Um, I don't have no ego. And I don't know it all for an absolute sure. And drill bits and various stuff up here. There's there's a set there. I got another set over there. My little vices. This is my sharpening system that uh, my buddy Stan Homer sent me a few years back. It works very good on small drill bits. And uh, you can set it up to do all kind of stuff. I've just used for um, drill bits. With the tiny drill bits, it works pretty good. And I use it from time to time. And up here, just storage. 
uh, knife handle wood. There's that block that we're going to work on in the next day or two. And let's see, more assorted handle wood. Here's some stabilized wood that I've got. I got somewhere that I have no idea what it is. I just know it's stabilized wood because it wasn't marked. Chop saw. Warning, you will see some dust on this end of the shop. <laughs> uh, clutter. Just odds and ends hanging here and there. There's some more handle wood. There's some uh, all kind of stuff up there. There's my lathe that I have not used very much. My lathe tools, that uh, I believe Daryl sent me those. And I do plan on making more lathe tools one day. Handles and all that kind of stuff. Folks, I've got so much to do that uh, I won't never get it all done. But uh, this is more junk down here. It's more sorted wood. This and that. That's the rain gutters I've never put up outside. How the weed eater got over here, I don't know. But uh, Antlers, horn, hand material. Uh, there's some more antler over there. And I've got some more out back. Uh, handle wood here. And my radial arm saw that I never use anymore. It's really in the way. It needs a new table. I really don't need the thing. But I hate to get rid of it because I really, really like that tool. Router table. Bandsaw. I've been asked to do a one-year review on the bandsaw, which I will do. Maybe one day this week. It's a little dusty. Uh, my little hot plate down here this is where i keep my my oil i need to put oil that i dip cheese in i don't think there's a better way to do them and there's some more neat put oil up here's some stuff that shouldn't be in here just junk uh, junk some more junk and you army guys military guys know you've got to have that you just got to have a can in the house somewhere or in the shop. Buffing station. Six month old fan that quit working and I cannot find the receipt to take it back. I think it was 60 blanky blank dollars. And down here is more junk that I got to go through and throw away most of it. More junk. Boat parts. old refrigerator out of the house that we thought was going to go out two years ago when we bought a new one and it's still running strong but a ice maker don't work anymore so junk All right, kids brought me this it was um one of them had it old filing cabinet and i thought it was very handy to keep stuff in keep our gloves and that kind of thing in there sanding belts Put all my sanding belts in there. Instead of having them all hanging up up here, you just got too much. Paint cabinet. Paint stain. And there's even junk in there that needs to be gone. Uh, that's an over the winter project. This is my little leather working area. This toolbox has leather working tools stuff for she's well how about that there's a wall of spider that nobody wants to buy so I'm gonna let it live right there uh, different stuff in there stamps a little bit of tooling I don't have a lot of leather tools I mean the tooling tooling pretty looking stuff letter sets and all's in there and just assorted stuff up here I just ordered epoxy earlier tonight because nobody in town has any and I found the same brand that I like I've got this for a standby and that but I don't like gorilla I don't care for it but I did find 
the brand that I like. Actually, less expensive than it is at the store, which is uh, was surprising. Anyway, this junk, this little, this is my original drill press, and I use it for my leather. That's the way I punch holes for to sew sheaves up. I use the drill press method. And that's the way I prefer it. I think it looks better because I don't have a leather sewing machine. Uh, and unless I ever run across one that I like, I probably never will have one. But that's okay too because I like hand sew. Alright, these toolboxes are my what I call everyday tools, what I use all the time. Uh, this one I made years ago out of scrap lumber, screwdrivers, those are Phillips, those are flats, pliers, cutters, pliers, all kinds of stuff in there. And this one I believe is sort of a rare one. My father-in-law gave me this years ago. That is a tubing bender. Bend copper tubing with it. See there, tube bender. Says it right there. <laughs> and you don't see many of these anymore that is a brake tool take off uh, brake drums at least I don't see many of them just different things like that and wrenches once I've got another box full of wrenches somewhere and I think everybody's socket door looks like this after a while. The sockets just get thrown in there. And down in there, there's my air tools are in there. Just all kind of stuff. Fishing stuff all over the shop too. Chisels, punches, files. I keep all this stuff right here close to the bench. Because I... Um, that's what I use constantly every day, just about. Main workbench, my Chuck Ward knife vise, my little Craftsman vise, a couple little holder and uh, little anvils to do different things with. Four by thirty-six, which is if you got a knife shop, you can't do without one of those, in my opinion. Uh, same with a scroll saw. I actually have two of these. I got another one over there. Uh, this one, the bearings are gone. I've got to get bearings. That is a leather stroke. One by 30. Handy little tool. Metal cutting band saw. And this is a 6 by 48. Also another tool if you have a knife shop that you just about can't do without. Joiner planer. Table saw, which has got to be replaced here at some point. One of these days. The workhorse of the shop. 2 by 42 belt grinder. Now this is where I grind all the bevels and do all, all the rough grinding and all that on that one now that mine has a, a uh, four inch disc which i never use rarely rarely do i use that so, uh, even on this one over here it's got that big eight inch disc which doesn't even have a disc on it because i just i never use that there's uh nathaniel there's most of yours right there and some of the rest of y'all are just over there. Wire wheel. This is an ancient grinder I've had for years and years. I just put some wire brushes on it. Uh, a big delta grinder. This is a fine, fine tool right here. This was a Father's Day gift several years ago. And let's see. Let's go on this other wall over here. Another area of the shop where there's a lot of junk, but there's a lot of good stuff. Some clamps up here. If you don't have cans full of nuts and bolts and screws and all that, you need to. <laughs> My cordless tools 
and some of these are not usable anymore like these old Ryobi's cannot find batteries for them anymore well you can get the lithium equivalent that will work in them but I will not pay $70 for one battery for an old tool I'm just not going to do it and just more stuff I use pretty much every day I added the TV three or four years ago so I can watch um, my favorite YouTubers which is I watch 90% of what I watch is YouTube very little on regular TV that interests me anymore and over here is just general junk that um, need all the time fasteners different stuff over there different junk just jump 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 there's my knife patterns that hang up here and my little hammer collections there and there we go that's just about it and I do have two storage rooms in the back which are it's dark so you can't see them but um they're such a mess I hate for anybody to see them anyway anyway there you go there is the shop now uh let me sit down and uh put you on the tripod and we'll talk about shop just a little bit more all right we got to sit down here talk uh just a little bit about the shop here now i was asked if um the shop was already here when we moved here uh no when we bought this property this entire area out here was a gigantic farm system called uh, american farms and that's what they still call it um, it was mainly peas soybeans and peas for the most part peas and for years you could drive before it got developed out here and so many people moved in you could just walk the, all the roads was dirt roads you could walk around through the fields nobody was here and find volunteer peas growing everywhere called cow peas, black eyed peas, whatever you want to call them. The occasional bush of crowder peas. And we would pick buckets of peas just growing wild. There was absolutely no trees. Uh, no nothing. Except power poles and dirt roads. That was in um, 1983, I'm thinking. I believe 83. But, uh, when they first put all this land up for sale, blocked it off and all that, we were one of the first 10 families to buy a property out here. And we had it probably six or eight months before we moved on it. We lived over in Pensacola. And I was actually working for my mom and dad in their grocery store at the time. And my dad sold the grocery store and we all moved out here. Because we bought a lot. My mom and dad bought a lot where Ricky Jr. lives now. Uh, my sister bought a spot next to us, which she later sold to us. And my father-in-law bought a lot. And uh, we were all going to move out here together, uh, including my in-laws, garden, raise animals, and all this kind of stuff, which we all did that except for my oldest sister. Uh, rest her soul. She passed away several years back. And my father and my in-laws, they never moved out here. My parents did. And so we are the only people that's ever lived on this property. Uh, we had a total of 10 acres. My father-in-law actually sold his just before he passed away, which was a one of those family debacles that we won't talk about. But, um, at least it wasn't the one that joined us. My daughter lives on that one now. And now my son has picked up the one on the other side of Ricky. Uh, we think they're going to stay there. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, no, nobody's ever lived here. All the trees, when you see me outside, all the trees you see for the 90%, most of them, uh, are what we planted. Even the big tree by the shop here. 
And I do have all kinds of pictures when we first bought it and all up through the years, but maybe someday I'll show all that. But um, now we built, a, we put our single wide mobile home out here when we first bought that we had in Pensacola, had it moved over here. And things was tough after my dad sold the business and I went to work up in town. Things are very, very tough as far as jobs. There was no jobs here. Um, couldn't hardly make it. So that's when I went went in the Army. And we lost the house, the double wide, I mean the uh, single wide. But we kept the property. Mom and Dad kept their property. But they moved away also. They still kept the property and we kept the uh, adjoining property. Got out of the Army, we came back. Put another single wide mobile home out here after probably six or eight months we lived in a house up in town we rented. But our goal was always to move back here, which we did. And then over time we built onto the trailer, uh, turned it into a house, uh, had a big gable roof on the front, three times as big as what we've got now. But um, that's one thing that bothers me about people say, well, it's a trailer. It's a trailer. A trailer is what you back up and hook up to the truck and drive off with it. Uh, a mobile home is what you can back up to and just drag it off. Uh, what we had then was the actual home. No wheels and axles under it. Exactly what I've got now. No wheels, no axles. You can't just back up and drive off with it. And it sort of, it irritates me to hear people badmouthing mobile homes, modular homes, house trailers. Uh, people do what they have to and they get what they can afford to get. Everybody can't have a big brick house built. And that's a fact of life. If we could have one, we'd have one. But we're perfectly happy with what we got. We was happy with that house. 1996, a tornado came through here. November 31st, 1996, I'll never forget it. We took a direct hit. We had a barn, a big barn out back where me and my dad raised rabbits, meat rabbits, and New Zealand's, Californians, and we were just getting into the exotic pet type rabbits. We raised worms, fish bait, up underneath the rabbit cages. We had a couple of hogs, we had chickens, big garden. Of course, back then I had a job still I had to go to, but my dad was here to help me a lot. And we were just trucking right along. So that, the tornado took out the house, uh, took out the barn, took out my little tiny shop that was right behind where this one is. And we lost everything we had in about, seemed like 30 seconds. Had to start over again. So everything we salvaged out of the house, we stacked up out here and built what is now the shop. This main part over here. We built, in a, it was for a storage shed to start with until we got something else and get everything cleared off and got the house we have now. We uh, kept all our stuff stored in there until we got set up. And then as the years went by, I put all my tools out here, what I had left. I had to start all over buying tools too because I lost almost everything I had. But I didn't have nearly what I have now. But, uh, we, um, all the, what I'm trying to get to is the shop is built out of salvaged lumber from the old house of what we could salvage. And this section I'm sitting in right now was built probably almost 20 years ago now out of more salvage lumber um, after Hurricane Ivan. No, it hadn't been 20 years. Anyway, but after Hurricane Ivan, my mom and dad's old place was the same thing. Single wide trailer built all the way around. Nice place. Hurricane Ivan all but destroyed that. So I had to have that tore down for the most part and hauled out of here. Salvaged all that wood I could. The floor where I'm sitting now was all the porch, front porch. Had a full front porch on 70 feet wide. 
So this is all salvage material. I built all this myself and had a little bit of help with the main shop, the main part of the, when we built the storage shed. Because um, at the time we started building it, after the tornado, I had, I had a broken shoulder, uh, broke fingers, and there wasn't a lot I could do, but a lot of the neighbors came and pitched in to help us get it put up so we could uh, have somewhere to put our stuff without having to go rent a building somewhere. But that is the origins of the shop. And I've spent the last 16, 17, 18 years, whatever it's been, uh, replacing, buying tools. It's took that long to get to where I'm at now. Uh, same way with all my fishing equipment. Uh, all that had to be started over, lost all that. Lost my boat. Well, it was part of it was still here. They got tore in half. And, and it was the nicest boat I've ever had as far as size was. 21 foot fiberglass center console. I believe it had a 40 horse on it. Wasn't a big motor, but it was a good motor. Uh, anyway, that is where the shop came from. So there you go, there's a little bit of history. I don't mind talking about it. It's a uh, made out of salvage wood. I built 90% of it myself. I'm sort of proud of it. The only thing I don't like about it now is it's not big enough. <laughs> I need one more room, and that is in the plans for whenever. It'll probably be a couple more years, but uh, I need one more little room for a, an office office and I like to have a separate room for my office and my leather work, that kind of thing. <coughs> Pardon me. But um and when I get ready to do that I'll do it myself. Because I know just exactly how I want to do it. So uh we'll see what happens with all that. But that'll be that's still a couple years down the road. So there you go uh there's the history. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, let me know because we're going to do some more. We've got some, uh, a bunch of knife work to do this week, so I'll show you all some of that too. Uh, the boat is all but done. i still got that one switch to be wired and then figure out the motor. But since that's turned hot weather on us again, I need to stay inside. And, uh, but the good fishing is still coming up. The cooler it gets, the better it gets and the easier for me to go. So we will get to that. My trip to Ocala has um, been put on hold for a while. But uh, I'll get there eventually. I'll get there. Now, that'll about do it. It is uh, very, very late for me. It's uh, 9.25 in the evening. So <laughs> I'm going to go inside and work on this a little bit. Uh, get it posted up. So thank y'all very much for watching. Uh, please click the like button if you like it. If you don't like it, click the dislike button. Subscribe if you're not already. I would appreciate it. That would help me out a lot. And I will see y'all in a few days. Oh, I can't reach the camera.